Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, as the title suggests, we are playing with watercolors. We are using one simple technique to create many different and unique projects. And as a cherry on top, we are using book pages. First, I'll show you the technique. Then we will create something. And then I'll show you all of these things in detail. Let's begin. I need to film Banjo, so if you don't mind moving, it will be great because you're kind of in my way. You're in my way, beautiful boy. Yeah. You will need book pages or any paper of your choosing watercolors or watered down acrylic paints, some brushes and water. Now first, a little disclaimer. I can't paint and I can't draw. I mean, I can, but my kids can draw better than me basically. But I am artistic in many other ways. So if you have those skills that I lack, even better, your project will be amazing. And if you're like me and painting is not your strong suit, you will soon see how you can still make beautiful things even though you are no Picasso, okay? All right, let's get started. I'm gonna pop this to the side. This is some sort of um, wax coated paper. So um, it just gives me a nice surface to pop my watercolor paints if I want to on there. Uh, but usually I just kind of work directly from this. Very, very cheap. This is a kid's watercolor set and it works perfectly fine. I'm going to choose two different colors, which generally is blue and this brown one here, or beige. So here we go. I have color on my brush and this is like my practice little piece of paper here. And now all I'm going to do is basically those dots that I was just doing there. So so we've got one down there, one up here, then I'm going to do one down here again, and then up here. Okay, you see that? That's my first color done. I'm going to pop it to the side and I'm going to repeat the same thing on my next book page. And the next book page. This is like a little class for little kids, but what we do with it next is not. And then you can also do things like this. Like just make splotches like that. Barely any kind of concentrated color on my brush, whatever was left after what I've just done. And then, you know, do a bit of something like that. Okay, now we're coming back to the first one. And we're going in with a second color. My goodness, if I had actual painting skills, there would be no end. We're just, you know, playing around. Like I'm not teaching you to paint here, as you can clearly see. I'm teaching you how you can be creative, even if you don't perhaps see yourself as a creative person. That one's done, I'm gonna pop it to the side. And we are working in like a production manner. I mean, you don't have to do it this way. You can make each one different, but I'm just kind of repeating the same steps because I'm trying to demonstrate the point. And it's pretty much what I've done with my project so far. So next. And now here's the one with the splotches. So let's see, we can do the same thing with this color. You're really not putting that much time and effort into creating these little pieces. So if they suck, you can just throw it in the bin. It's really no big deal. It's much harder when you spend a whole lot of time creating something and then you don't want to throw it away. And now you can really like just have a play around. You can introduce a third color. You can start doing some doodling. Maybe you can add some dots with a black liner pen. You can make this whole thing a bit more dense by, I don't know, doing something in between maybe. You can make more circles closer together. These are all variables that you can now play around with. You might be cringing like if you're 
have a natural talent for this sort of thing you might be cringing at this at the moment which is perfectly fine because i'm kind of cringing too when i'm looking at this but i do love the end result of all of these projects maybe for this one i'll add some purple i'm really liking these very dark mute uh, what am i trying to say like vintagey almost dirty uh look or colors i'm gonna call that one done okay at this um, point i start to add some stems before we do that i just want to mention this other thing that i started doing as well towards the end so you can start off with marking your little circles and where you're going to that way you're going to get more of a visual kind of feel of how it's going to look when it's done and then you use those for doing exactly what i've just done and here we go okay so a little bit of craziness happening there excellent you don't even have to wait for anything to dry and also if you were to use actual watercolor paper you would get beautiful bleeding effects as well okay so for the stems i kind of draw them in first because as i said you know my drawing skills are not great so going in with the watercolor straight away is probably not a good idea so i'm just you can see what i'm doing here and i'm drawing them to a point here because i'm gonna have a little bow or something in there the thing is if i had interest in drawing i would be looking up videos on youtube there are plenty of tutorials i just really don't have much interest in it i'm more about creating something and the way i mean creating something with paper and rather than drawing and stuff the way this project happened is uh, i had a bit of a session with my daughter playing around with paints and there was lots of paint left over and i really really hate throwing out paint so i just started doing splotches on paper just like what i've done here to use up that paint and you know what i really liked how it looked and i thought i'm just gonna keep going and i did i just want a really thin brush that can do like really thin strokes and i kind of get that excess color off on this piece first and then I go in and follow the lines that I've already made. Or somewhat follow the lines I've already made. I'm gonna pop this one to the side and repeat on the next one. Banjo, are you eating the box? These stems are way too dark. <laughs> I'll have to figure something else out with this piece. So I just want to say that sometimes when I say that I can't draw and I can't paint, sometimes people kind of get a little bit angry with me for saying that because their belief is that everyone can paint. And that's true, everyone can splash paint on paper, but it doesn't make them good at it, if that makes sense, which is what I'm trying to say i'm not very good at it i don't have that kind of artistic talent that other people do and i'm perfectly fine with saying that <laughs> it doesn't bother me in the slightest that i can't paint or draw and if it did bother me i would do something about it there's plenty of tutorials that can teach you i just don't have patience i'm trying to redeem myself with these stems here and just doing little dots and like where what what's this business here where is this stem going to let's fill this one up and see what happens maybe that's the secret okay anyway I'm, I'm leaving this one and here they are so i've done in total five and they kind of look not too bad because we're gonna obviously make them look great and these are some that i have done previously and you can see there really isn't that much variation between them this one i like this one just splotches splotches splosh this splosh onto the book page and then i played around with some red and then i don't know what i was doing here that's a disgrace but i kept it to show you this is the one where i kind of went splashing that paint because i didn't want to waste it and i thought and this is just i don't know what that is yeah, I thought I'd, I don't want to throw around, throw away that paint and I just went and ahead and did this. Actually, if I'm being honest, this is the first thing that I did and I thought that looks absolutely horrendous. Um, I'm not going to do that. Then I was like playing around with 
watercolor paper. Oh, there's a bit of banjo there. And yeah, I think doing this on watercolor paper will look great. Okay. Now you go ahead and you do something with them. And that's what this next part of the video is about. First, I'm going to choose one from here that I like. Should we do that I like the best or that I like the least? I really hate this one. So maybe I could do like one that I like the best and one that I like the least. Only problem is I don't really like any of them that much. Oh, this would be a real challenge to do something. Look at how this horrendousness. See what I mean? But anyway, I was just testing out some doodling and stuff like that just to see how it's going to look. Okay, here's what I'll do. I'm going to go with this because it's not very nice. It's got this weird stem here that's, I don't know what that was about. I don't know what's going on there. And they're all kind of like, not together so let's use this one because it's you know ugly look i'm okay with admitting that this is ugly and i want to demonstrate how you can make it pretty you know when you look at a cereal box all right well here's a perfect example only because it's actually still sitting on my desk since the last video so this is my gigantic journal uh, that you may have seen because deconstructed journal you may have seen in the last video and the thing is and the reason why i'm showing is this is because this journal was made from a linen uh, box the box that your bedding comes in which is rubbish it's something to be thrown in the bin yet i made something really beautiful out of it and i want to see if i can make something really beautiful out of this so i really want to make something that i haven't made already that i'm about to show you all of the ideas that i had and all of the things i made so i'm just going to have a little think on what to do okay what i haven't done so far is fussy cutting and then doing something with it so that's what i'm going to do i think it's already looking a little bit better upside down like this we'll see when i turn it the right way up should have left a bit more white but i didn't so i'm just gonna get rid of this edge in here okay so we fussy cut it i'm not sure about that fork thing happening here and now what i could go in and fussy cut out all of the book page parts here but that would be craziness so i'm not going to do that obviously but it is an option so now I feel like I want to mute the whiteness. Mute it away. Is that better or worse? We don't know yet. Now that the inking business is happening, I might as well go around, ink the edges, because that's just what I do. That's just how I roll. Probably doesn't make any sense in this project, but that stem going on there doesn't make any sense either. So who says this has to make sense? I just had an idea. Uh, it's not going to work, but I'm going to share the idea that popped into my head. Uh, I made these mason jars. I have a video on making these mason jars, like whimsical mason jars, I call them. And I just had an idea to put that into a vase. And I thought of the mason. Okay, as I was saying, I thought of the mason jars. So maybe, okay, that's not going to work, even though it's quite a good idea, actually. But now that kind of leads me to the next idea that just popped into my head, which is these like bottles. I really need a vase, which I don't have. And I'm not even sure that I'm gonna go this way anyway, but let's see. That doesn't make sense because it's got a lid. But if I cut it, oh, that's quite nice. That is quite nice. I like that. Now what are we gonna do with it? I'm not going to complicate anything. I'm just taking a 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and I'm going to make a quick kind of something like a travels notebook insert or something like that. I don't really like the inside and it doesn't make any sense. It's about Dora. And so I want to um, I want to hide it and I want to reinforce it anyway. So first thing I'm going to do is just apply washi tape onto the fold. And next thing I'm going to do is hide all of the inside. I'm going to do all of this off camera because this is none of this. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm going to sew all around these pieces of paper. And if I wasn't planning to sew, then I would have glued all the way to the edges. All right, here's the plan. This is going to be, it's not going to be a travels notebook because it's quite large. It's going to be 
I might put some pockets here, pockets and a signature, but I won't do that today because that's not what this video is about. So now I'm just going to make this as beautiful as I possibly can. I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down first. And now I'm gluing this down. I only took that bottom portion of that plastic off so that I can actually pull, put this in place before I glue it down to make sure that it's exactly how I want it. Today is very gloomy and dark, which is why everything seems dark in this video. So the lighting isn't the best. And now I still have a lot of work to do to make that look nice. So first I'm going to try and hide this part here make it look like there's some water or something or like the the vase is decorated so maybe i can do something like that yes next thing i want to do maybe here it'll be nice to have like a little bow and i really wanted to show you this bow here so simple to do and i'm going to do that and see if it even goes on this project so all you need is two hard punches different sizes and if you don't have hard punches you can just cut out with scissors just draw the shape okay so here we go first i'm going to cut out the large uh, hearts so when you're cutting it don't cut it all the way you don't want to have two separate hearts you want to have them still joined in the middle so when I do that, you see, I have that. It's kind of like a butterfly. Depending on what you're making, you can have butterflies, you can have bows like I'm doing, you can pretend they're hearts, whatever. I don't know. Okay, same thing with the smaller punch. All right, so now we have that. And then for the tails, the bow tails, I am just going to do a curved cut here. Just using a bit of off cut and then here and then you have this kind of thing happening which is pretty cool it looks like mustache which is not what we're going for so we're gonna actually before i cut that off we're going to do a little you know those pointy tails and then cut here we go ink away ink all of your little pieces and then let's get closer then you layer them so let's pop this one like this and this one going over the to the other way maybe one can be a bit longer you know play around with that sort of stuff and then you do this and then you do the little one you know what when i worked this out yesterday when i was crafting i was over the moon look at this bow how much better does everything look with the bow yeah so now i'm just gonna glue it all down just piece by piece like i've just shown you maybe a bit of something in the middle we will come back to that because i just want to knock the camera first and th then i just want to focus on this here and try and make it look better so my thoughts are to go in and add i don't know what like little things maybe maybe like tiny little bling pieces or something just to really don't know if it's gonna, going to work can't go wrong with just giving it a go and if it doesn't work it doesn't work big deal i'm not loving it i'm hating it a little bit at least when i when i only have the one dot in the middle so maybe if i like scatter a few will it make a difference okay i will admit it's not the best but that's okay i am deciding to leave them even though i'm not a huge fan of how that looks just a final little touch here on that bow. I think it looks quite nice. It just needs some final touches like inking all of the edges. All right, so while I was inking the edges, I realized these bling dots really don't go with the whole grunge thing. I'm actually better off just going in with some markers and drawing some dots. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'll be right back. And here's what I have. I don't know if that made it better or worse, but I've got some dots within the flowers and also around the flowers. And I'm going to leave it here and call this one done. Of course, I have to finish the whole project, but I'm loving how this looks. Now, I just want to make one more thing and I have to think of something quickly with this one. I'm thinking maybe to use this file folder and I think I'm going to split it in half.
I'm not really entirely sure how this is gonna look, but we won't know until it's done. I'm gonna glue these two pieces on. Okay, now that that's glued on, they kind of meet there, I'm gonna make this into a pocket. So I'm gonna sew this shut. Okay, here we go. So that's a pocket. And now I'm just gonna do something with this leftover piece. All right, here we go. Just a quick little something that opens up like that. Lots of journaling space and then it can go into the pocket just like so pretty cool and then perhaps a spiral paper clip to keep it shut for now i can go back to that and you know make it better oh it's missing something a little sticker and pop it down there keep it real simple actually i changed my mind and i'm going with a sentiment and here we go i'm gonna call this done i love how that looks better than that bow sticker and now i'm going to show you all the other things you can do so i'm gonna name them as i go idea number one which we did in this video is fussy cutting out and then creating something fun idea number two is creating this pouch or pocket and splitting the image in half so that it kind of meets that was the whole point of this ideas are endless really Idea number three is journaling spots. So you can see what I did here. I just glued it onto cardstock, did the bow thing that I showed you how to do, sewn around, and there it is. That can go into a journal as a journaling spot. Same thing with this. I mean, I don't know if you would call it, this is the first one that I did. I played around with this idea, using a bit of twine, gluing it down, and I just kind of ripped all around and sewn all around and added this gold foiling, which I've never done before. You can probably tell I've never done it before. I'm going to call this a journaling spot. I'm going to put it in that category, even though it was just me playing around. Here, I made pretty much the same thing as the journaling spot, but I made it into a tag. So I did the bow thing, love that. You can see the actual drawing, the water coloring, it's not that great. But I think when you have a project like this, I think it looks quite nice. And another thing that I didn't mention is you could scan your particularly good paintings, but be mindful of what you're actually scanning. If you're scanning book pages, that might be a copyright issue. So do keep that in mind. This idea here, this is a writing board. So it's actually laminated. And what this basically is, I'm sure you know, but uh, in any case, because our journals can be, I'm working on this journal, but let's take this example here. It can be chunky and when you're writing, it can be in the way. Basically a wording, uh, writing board, you'll put it underneath the page you're writing on and that uh, minimizes these bumps that might be in your journal. Usually I keep my writing board right here at the back of the journal. And that's why I added this little tassel so it can kind of peek through. So a writing board, it's not for writing on it, it's to help you writing in your journal. So all I did basically is glue it down on a bit of scrapbook paper, laminate, I have a little sentiment here rather than a bow, nothing chunky because I'm laminating. And I added this, I have a tutorial on these fabric beads, DIY fabric beads, I did this in a tutorial. I'll link that video if you want to have a look. Next idea, I also have a video on using contact paper, which is what this is. So basically I just put two book pages together, covered them in contact, uh, contact paper or sheet. I forgot what it's called. I'll link that video as well if you want to have a look at some other ideas. And that's all it is. I sewn all, all around to keep it shut, but then I had lots of skipped stitches. So I added a second straight stitch to kind of take away from that. And it creates a really nice border. And then I have a butterfly sticker here. And you can see when you look at a project like this, when it's done, when it's in a journal, when it's full of stuff, the actual painting is not something to ponder for too long. Like I wouldn't be, you know, I'm not terribly proud of this watercoloring that I did, but I think I explained why. All right, next idea. This is kind of a few ideas put together. So we're splitting the image in half. You can do this with your paintings that you're not particularly fond of. So you're splitting it in half and then I created an a oversized tag. It's also a journaling spot. It's a tag. It falls into a few different categories. It's also some pockets you see here. Left that open. And then you can have tags or whatever you want to put in there. 
looks like a beautiful piece of ephemera we're taking away from the painting. I mean, if you can paint beautiful things, if you're an artist in that way, if you're creative in that way, I mean, there's no end to the beauties that you can create. Okay, this one here, same thing that we've done here and on the one I did in this tutorial. I was kind of going for a bit of a wardrobe uh, kind of a look, I suppose. So this opens up. It's held closed with magnets. There's magnets in here and in there. Love that. Split that in half. And then in here, I have a little pockets. They're like little drawers. Journaling space, journaling space. And then also an idea is to create a card. So this can be like a journal cover. It can be a card. But I really love this element. I mean, we can do this element with all sorts of, it doesn't have to be with watercolor paintings, but I really love to do this. See how we're splitting. I mean, if you take a closer look at this, you know, it's messy, it's not great. But when you look at it like this, I think it looks really nice, actually. I like it. All right, here's another one. I created a whole journal to kind of show you, you know, if you're looking at the painting itself. I mean, you know, it's just two colors, blue and brown, and then we've got these stems. But then when you have it uh, as part of a larger project, we have the blue here. This is actually made from a paper bag. So... It's open here at the top and also here at the back. So that's like two pockets. Added lots of blue to tie in with the blue in the flowers. Blue here, blue here, if you can see that. And then of course on the inside, going along with that theme. This is not what this video is about, but just giving you ideas. I've got some tabs happening. I've got a closure happening and it's a beautiful end result. I really, really love how that looks and I love the idea of including your little paintings in your project. Okay, so here's another journal. And it's just plain inside. But this cover that I did is laminated. So we're marrying a few different ideas here. And it's just the little painting is glued onto scrapbook paper. I put it through my laminator, created a spine, created a journal. There's a little sentiment here and we can have a closer look just little dots really i mean <laughs> you can do this mindlessly while watching tv you can have your kids join you my kids would do a 10 times better job than i did here i probably should have asked them to do it for me okay another idea that we have here is a notepad so <laughs> really quite you know very simple this was actually a leftover from a file folder just this part of the top very simple all i did is glued this on top i mean i didn't even bother covering the inside and i made a water uh, waterfall effect down here and it's just a little notepad and this is a journaling companion it can go inside a journal happy mail etc and look at that don't look at it too closely okay and then this one here the journal again i created it specifically just to show you this one idea which is a flip page and all of these are by the way, this was sent to me by a lovely subscriber. Lots of Tim Holtz vibes right there. Love it. And anyway, I just laid. So all of these ideas I've shown you, you can do with anything. But here comes the flip page. So there's the little painting. And then you can see how it's kind of hinged there. That opens up and creates, you know, extra writing space and as well as your original little artwork. I didn't do anything here, I think I forgot. But I think things like this are really good to do on pages in journals, like book pages in journals that you can't really write on. So you're creating extra writing space by hinging, or in this case, I just glued this section down. It's like a little surprise in a journal when you're flipping through and then you kind of you lift this up and you're like, oh, what's this? And then you can have fun stuff underneath, a little secret journaling space or, you know, pockets, all sorts of stuff. I mean, the ideas are endless, but this is just one little way. And when you look at it from afar, look how cool that looks, especially if I move it around a bit. Close up, not so great, but still, you know, I know I keep saying this and I'll probably get comments from people saying, stop saying you're not good at painting and drawing and stuff, but I'm being realistic here. And there will be others who are thinking, oh my goodness, what are you doing, woman? Just stick to glowing stuff and... The thing is, I'm sharing my personal opinion here and how I feel about my drawing and painting skills. And I have no problem whatsoever 
that I'm not very good at it. I don't want to be very good at it. I would much rather stay bad at it and still create all of these beautiful things that I can now go and fill up my journals with. I, I'm quite happy with this. And I have to say my favorite, favorite one. Yeah, this one takes the cake for me. I love this beauty. And there we have it. I hope you feel inspired. I hope you're going to go and dab some paint and not worry about your artistic skills. And if you are artistically inclined in this way, oh my goodness, like there is no end to what you can create when you marry your watercoloring skills with junk journals and handmade books. But there we have it. We used one simple technique, which is just dab, dab, dab. And we created all of these unique, beautiful projects. I think they are beautiful. I hope you do too. I hope you feel inspired. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.